you guys are on there already. Try and get myself out in the sun. I'm really hoping you can hear us. Big steps here at uh, Craven Cottage. It's like an old fashioned stand. I don't know if you can sort of see sense for that. There's some of the modern seating at the front if, if you're interested. Very traditional. We've had us sitting in here. Anyway, beautiful sunny day. I'm freezing. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm the only person I think in the whole of this ground in about 14 layers. Well, I'll come down to pitch side. So you guys can have a little look at what's going on. You might be able to see Matt Ritchie in the background there. Just chatting away. You see the yellow shorts? Chatting away to somebody anyway. Right. Liam Kennedy here, of course. No Dominic Skur, who may well be watching from Sunny Climbs. Although it's a nice day here, nice day here down in the capital. John Cronin down speaking to Eddie Howe, but I'm sure I will be quite pleased to have come away from this little square of beautiful part of West London with three more Premier League points. Three more Premier League points that ensures Newcastle United are unbeaten since the last international break and really, seven out of nine, what more could you ask for? It's hard to say they definitely deserve that today. But I very much do feel like there was a... Hello Pete Davey there, I see you coming in the comments mate. Hope you enjoyed the day. Top class stuff, I'll be looking forward to the Loaded Mag, NUFC guys. Pete Davey of course, one of the main men there. Get in lad, massive result, I see that. Jordy 2 for life as well, Bruno, Bruno, Bruno. We'll come on to the main man soon. Right. Yeah, for me, it's hard to, sorry if there's wind here in the background, it's like blustery. Tell us if, you, if, if it gets really bad, just tell us. And I'll probably move to somewhere a little bit more shelter. Um, yeah, it's hard to say they definitely uh, deserved that. It was, it was very much a, a tale of two halves. I thought that first half Newcastle United were absolutely dominated from, from the very first kick to the last in some ways. Uh, looked very sluggish, sleepy. Uh, very disappointing actually that first half but what I would say I'm going to move up here just for this wind but what I would say is Newcastle United weathered the storm once they got through that first half hour and it was the first half hour for me that was maybe the the turning point um, once they got through that half hour where Fulham pet had the goal I mean Dubravka didn't have a whole host of saves to make but they did pet by the pet by the goal in some ways didn't take their chances and I think it kind of summed up their day for them really it was almost a tale of one team showing some quality in front of the goal and another team not really struggling to show any quality I think that Fulham will be really disappointed that they didn't go in at half time uh, with a lead oh it's Dominic Skid I knew he'd be watching I knew he'd be watching he'd be sitting on a sunbed somewhere and he's still watching the Jordy Journals you're a big miss mate it's a shame you're not here even just for the driving um, yeah, so that first half, I think they'd be really disappointed that they hadn't got in at the break with a with a lead. You know, after the half hour, Newcastle started to get a little bit of a foothold in the game. Um, but then the second half kicked off, and again, it was a bit. It wasn't. Newcastle struggled a little bit to to stop the the Fulham momentum. But again, Fulham didn't really do a whole lot with it. They didn't look like scoring particularly. Dubravka made a couple of saves, a lot of stuff straight at him, saves he maybe should make. Um, and then I thought really the turning point was the Jacob Murphy off Harvey Barnes on. I don't think Harvey Barnes necessarily had one of the most effective games he'll ever have with the ball at feet. But Newcastle just looked so much more of a complete attacking unit who looked like they were going to score goals. Um, they looked a threat, it caused problems. A lot of Fulham fans around me saying exactly that. They'd, it was like almost this that was scary when you suddenly see Gordon, Barnes and Isak running at you like they did. Um, and they kind of accepted that Newcastle had showed that quality and probably deserved it. A couple of big talking points in the game, of course, for Bruno for me. He was winning headers in his own box um, from all that, that sort of flurry of set pieces that Fulham had in that second period. And then 
you know, getting on the end of things and finishing the way that he did. He's anybody who watches the Jory Journals regularly will know I'm an absolute I'm a Bruno Guimaraes lover. I absolutely cannot get away with how good this guy is. Um, we need to cherish him. I seen he was he was brilliant at the end where he's orchestrating and he's casting out the fans and he was I think he was giving a bit of the I think he was kissing the badge a little bit for the goal. But, uh, from the pictures, it's hard to tell from the angle that we were at. Um, but a massive, it felt like a big three points that because Newcastle too often struggled on the road um, and today they went and followed up what was a disappointing result against Everton in many ways because that was it, it was all in their hands they've come here and not maybe put in any kind of a, a similar performance they played better I would argue against Everton for large periods um, but three points is all that matters and it was kind of it's all that ever matters at this point of the season Newcastle United have really put themselves in the mix and if they keep these kind of if they can be one of the teams that shows that little sense of consistency which they've actually shown in the last three to have won two drawn one after the international break this uh, European spot is absolutely crying out for for somebody just to grasp it nobody really has um, I'll go on to the second talking point which was the disallowed goal uh, having seen it about 50 times might sound controversial but I think it's the arm I think it was soft to have disallowed it, but when the referee was sent over, I can then see how he has disallowed it, simply because when you slow it down so much, it looks like Dan Byrne has purposely shoved the defender, rather than actually go for the ball, which when you watch it full time, that really wasn't the story of what happened when the cross came in. A uh, lovely finish by Fabian Chair it was very deliberate in going to the front post rather than across the keeper. Uh, but we expect that from him, he's, he's a class individual. Didn't have his greatest of games today, although that big commitment at the end uh, was, was incredible, anybody who watched the game. Jump in the comments, guys. Thanks a lot for everybody watching. There's 50 odd years. I'm not going to have a hugely long um, live today. It's not going to go on forever. So do get involved. Give it a like. Give it a share. Just so it shares things in the algorithm and more and more people can see that we're on. Do shout up if there's any wind causes any problems. Because uh, we've had that before where I'm only off my phone. And if, it, if, if you do sort of struggle to hear us in any way, just shout up. There are lawn mowers, of course, going in the background here. Looks great, that lovely big stand there. Looks like we've got some incredible plants here, but this one. Something of the uh, 1800s. Right, I'll jump in the comments and see what you guys are talking about, and then I'll come back onto a few other things that I want to see. Right, let's have a look. Gone through this. Yeah, Pete Davy, mate, good to see you. Jordy 2 for life, thanks for jumping in again. Pete Davy, get in, lad. Massive result, love that. Love that, mate, you know we do. Uh, yeah, Dale Dolphin? Fulham can't, can't be mad. Terrible quality in the final third, but I can't argue with that. It, it was, it was almost Newcastle's quality told in the second half. Um, where Fulham really struggled that, that first half hour. If I'm if, if I'm a Fulham fan, I'm thinking you've got to be two goals up. You've got to be out, out almost putting yourselves out of sight. And I think that probably would have broke a few Newcastle hearts who, who really <laughs> were struggling in that first half hour. Some of Jacob Murphy's passing out from the back. And uh, it's constant of all the players. It's not just Jacob Murphy. It happened from Longstaff, Gordon, uh, Hall, who I thought had a, had a struggle today against some proper wingers. Uh, Iwobi had them all over the shop. And then Adama Traore was skipping past him for fun when he got the opportunity. But again, young lad, still has a lot of learning to do. You can clearly see that today after the highs of the home games. Um, let's go. Jordy 2 for life, not being biased, but the ref has put a day. Jordy Jerry, I get in, lads. Let's go to you, Dominic. Newcastle shot and start, but grew into the game. Job done in the end. Can't argue with that one, mate. Hope you're enjoying the time away. Gary Lee, also clever by how to make sure Debravka stayed down as long as possible to get him to bollock the lads right that this is this is cynical there was absolutely nothing wrong with uh, Martin Dubravka and that food, after about half an hour he went down it was just clearly a time wasting boy just so anyhow we get the players over they all went over to the dugout and I've, I've only seen what I could see and the little stills that we got shown here on the cameras but it looked like he read the riot after them it was almost the, the bit I could catch at the end it was almost like do you want this like, like kick up the backside time and it, it, te it tended to work at the end of that second half end of that first half then the second kind of went the same way as the first but then you know the quality told I thought well, that substitution made all the difference uh, uh, 
not sure about that one. Referee inexperienced showed bottle decision on Shaw's goal. Uh, justice by Bruno. I think so too. Graham Towler. Pity about Wolves goal disallowed, but we're still on target for Europe. Yeah, there's a lot of people saying that Wolves one was a bit uh, a bit iffy. Anybody who's seen it, give us a shout at ex exactly what happened. And I don't know. I've not seen anything yet. So um, I think a draw would have been a, a best result. But ultimately, end the day. There's going to be another team probably in this little group of, of teams. It could be Chelsea, it could be West Ham, it could be Brighton, it could be Wolves. Somebody's going to grasp it because it's there for the taking. One of these European places. Um, I say one of them. You know, it's pulled Manchester United right in the results they've been having recently. So you'd argue three of the European players. Well, six, there, six, seven, eight, three of the European players are probably all up for grabs. Seventy-three, you guys are now. Give it a like, please, if you can, if you like what we're doing, of course, um, because it shares for the algorithm. More and more people will watch. Probably only going to stay on about 20 minutes here because I've got to get back in the car, up and down in the day to London today. Dri drove this morning, driving straight back tonight. So I'll not stay on too long because I've got my own work to do as well. But I will stay on as long as you guys want to chat. Like a smear, just a comment made. As bad as we were in the first half, there were a couple of decent chances for Isak. When with a better touch, you would expect him to score. I've got to say that, that's, that's actually a fair comment on Alexander Isak. Um, he was feeding off scraps today, but when he did get the scraps, he wasn't very... He didn't exactly grasp them, is what I would say, and that's you know I think that's probably been fair of his performances recently. Top class player, but isn't great. I'm getting I'm getting some funny looks from John Anderson over here. <laughs> I'll not put him on the camera with what he's mouthing to us. <laughs> yeah, he didn't think that was a great performance. I think that's fair to say. Ben Marcy, a huge win, mate. Come on, the lads. Cheers, mate. It was nearly as good as your performance at the walk at Dome on Thursday night. Graham Dockney thought those was first injuries made up. Remember Pope doing something similar when we had a bad start, just to give us a chance to group that's absolutely, you know, there's no doubt about that at all. Uh, he, they've done it before and they were clearly doing it again. Chris NUFC, it's kind of, sorry, go back to that. It's kind of one of the loopholes in this rules and they might end up looking at it. But when a goalkeeper goes down, really, what else can you do? It's not like you can send them off the pitch for 30 seconds like you would now for your player. And I think it's probably something that people are going to use more and more of. Uh, it's just gamesmanship at the end of the day. It doesn't, it's not right, but it will happen. Uh, and I'm sure it'll happen again to Cassian at some point as well. Chris NUFC, we left it late to win. We certainly did, mate. Thanks for your comment. Geordie 2 for life. A clean sheet is as rare as Sunderland seeing only 25,000 at the game instead of 42. Now, this is silly. It is a very silly. It's a very valid comment. Some of them have had no any at 40,000. It's actually an embarrassment what, what they do, but it must be because that's the ticket sold, as you maybe season tickets. But if you look, if there's 25 there every week, you can see that very clearly from the crowds. Anybody who watches, different comment altogether. Let's forget about them rubbish. Right, Graham Dockney, we're poor at the day, but full of more toothless. Valuable three points. Still think we're finishable. Man United. Gary Kilvin, our midfield man. Bruno Guimaraes, what a guy. Craig Foggin, Bruno, captain material for me, he's fantastic, he's certainly a leader. The stuff he does on and off the ball is absolutely incredible. Eight of you guys on here, give it a like, guys, so we can keep this uh, live sharing around. Hardly Brett, better second half. First half, very passive. But what does Fulham really do? A good run on the road. I think that's a fair point, you know. Fulham, for all of their dominance, I think, in that first 30 minutes, uh, will be very disappointed that they, they struggle to do much else in the game couple of shots in the second half but nothing really dangerous and although they had a lot of set pieces, pieces towards the end for me didn't really feel like they were knocking on the door to score um, Gary Kilvin and Murphy the worst play, worst performance I've ever seen Willock didn't look interested oh my god Longstaff what happened there so I, looked, I didn't think Longstaff was a disaster the day I thought Joe Willock has looked off colour um, for weeks I, I don't think he looks right uh, there's something I'm not saying he's injured but there's something not right there um, he was very poor the day before he came off. We'll be interested to see what Jordan comes back with and what Eddie Howe has to say about that. Um, I'm just looking around, there's nobody here yet, so Eddie must be still in there speaking to, to the lads. But if Jordan comes, I'll get him on and we'll have a quick chat. Or, oh, obviously we'll be doing a longer form analysis video um, quite quickly after this, when Jordan does come back up. Um, and we'll aim to get that up the ASAP tonight so you guys can talk a little bit more in depth. Uh, but on Jacob Murphy as well, sorry to go back to that, Jacob Murphy, yeah, Jacob Murphy was really poor on the day. Um, and it was it was, it was was a transformed game when, when Harvey Barnes came on, in my opinion. Steve Renfer, come on the lads. Uh, on his 100th game, scores the winner, Bruno, I did, yeah. Grim Tala, long staff can follow Phillips to lead. I'm not sure what's going to go on. Uh, Pete Davey, make sure you all like this live review. Oh, cheers, mate, that's exactly what I try to do. I say it enough on here, I hope people do like it, so 
half you guys watching have probably liked it again so if you're the half can that'd be fantastic uh john spence Liam longstaff was absolutely shocking again you're not the only one to say that in the comments mate thanks for your comment jeff johnson fans whining about eddie not playing hall perhaps today we saw why the boy's potential but he's young he says a lot that's a fair point i think i'm always careful now if i say anything i do feel like newcastle can be particularly on social media quite a divisive place um but i think it's actually really fair to say that lewis hall was really poor today he was really poor he got done left right and center uh, it will be toyed with him a lot of the time out on the right hand side and adama when he got the opportunity less effective but when he got the opportunity did exactly the same a lot to learn a lot of defensive work to learn but it's a good play to see with the ball just pan around here before i continue the comments you see that it's elliot anderson just having a look around on the pitch just by himself obviously before the, the team bus goes having a little moment talking to family i would assume on on the phone uh, what way up to Steve C, momentum is key if we can beat Spurs. I'll back us to crack on and beat Man United as well. Fair point. Ben Marsage, do you think Euro conference conference will be enough to satisfy Isak and Bruno to stay if Europe really is what will be needed to get them to stay? So, fair point, Ben. Uh, my opinion on that is I don't think Europe is the be all and end all. Um, to keep uh, Bruno and Isak, I think both players want to remain. They both want to stay in Newcastle United. I think Europe would help. But it isn't the be all and end all. You know what he's shouting about. Um, I don't think it's the be all and end all. Uh, simply because I think the lack of Europe is made up for if they stay, which I think they, I think they do want to stay, and I think the club want to keep them as well. Um, it just depends on. There's not many teams can afford them, uh, and whoever comes in might take them. And there's not really much you can do about that. It's just about levels. Levels have always been in place whether it was Liverpool and players in the 70s and 80s or Manchester United doing so in the 90s or whether it's Real Madrid coming to Newcastle United in, in the 2000s it always happens bigger fish in the pond you can't do anything about it but I think largely they do want to stay and the club want to keep them and I don't think it makes much sense for them not to stay and not to keep them um, but I don't think European football is the be all and end all simply because you could end up doing really well in, in the Premier League next season and then suddenly that then becomes uh, it kind of negates it in some ways. Sorry, we've got John Anderson here. Newcastle legend. <laughs> and of course, BBC Radio Newcastle, uh, he's just laughing at me doing my video. Always get the cameos, always get the cameos of Jordy Jones. Um, what was I saying? He's put us off there. Yeah, I don't think it's Bill Nendel because essentially you could be, if, in, if it comes to, you know, September, October, November, Newcastle are third or fourth in the division and they're in the mix of being the Champions League again, it kind of keeps things ticking over. Then players will look and say, well, they're in the prop war, what might be in the Champions League next year if things start going well next season. So I don't necessarily think it's a be-all and end-all. I don't think either player will be pushing to move. Um, but like I said, the big fish, Newcastle are a big fish. They're big enough, they're a big enough fish, but they're not one of the biggest fish and they probably never will be, really. You can never compete. It take a lot, a lot of years of consistent uh, success to compete with the biggest fish, the sharks of, of the uh, of the pond, and we all know who they are. So yeah, it's a fair point, Ben. But I think it, I don't think it's the be all and end all, but I do think it would help. Uh, Jory two for life, safe journey home, lads. We love our Jory two. Knows our cheers, mate. I really appreciate that. Uh, Graham, tell that Bruno joined when we were struggling with relegation, so doesn't really want to go. I agree. Jory two for life for me. Hall is a left sided fielder and a fullback. But in my opinion, interesting. I think he's he's been a midfielder in his his career previously, so it's it's not a far off point. John C, bad first half, better second full of poor. Agreed. Graham Dockney, Barnes, great as impact sub. I think we'll have to wait till next season to see him uh, best full games. Yeah, yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, John C, any injury updates? Just waiting on Jordan. We'll have to wait and see what the situation was with Joe Willock. Um, it might be one for the, the, the analysis video after. Uh, Joey two for life, Bruno's cap next year. I'll be good through both parties. I think that's a big way to make him stay, to make him a leader of the project. But there'd have to be a lot of movement to make that happen with regards to the sales trip there, etc. So I'm not sure it definitely will happen, but I actually am all for that. And we've mentioned it previously on Geordie Journal's videos. Terry Hogg, uh, that's me finishing alongside with Murphy. Don Pearson to have so many players off their game or injured and still being with the show you was ridiculous when you think about it fair it fairly is, yeah. Dominic Sue looking forward to Galatas right away next season. Yeah. If National will pay for it to go there, although we do put my own hands in my pockets to, to make sure we're always there for the Jolly Journals. Dom is no uh, stranger to that situation. You know, mate, if we get Galatasaray away, we're, we're over there. Donna kebab in hand. 
that might just be me and Jordan, of course. You know, with your svelte, impressive physique. John Spence, can't believe Murphy started before Barnes. Yeah, no, I think it's fair. I've got through all your comments here, guys. Do like, uh, it does help share this video around the algorithm. Apologies for the other wind. It's whistling at the back of this stand here. I'll try and turn that way uh, to keep it out your, out your ears. Yeah, I, I think Barnes is a fitness thing. I also think it was a bit of a, I don't know the answers to this, but my only thought on it could be it was a bit of a rotation thing with regards uh, Barnes, of course, and Anderson playing the game the other day and both being back from relatively long-term injuries. Um, so it probably did make sense to bring Willock and Murphy back in today and then it might be a switch over again. But I think Barnes and Anderson for me are knocking on the door. Um, lovely flick from Anderson for the goal. I want to see more from him. Um, I, you know, I, I think anybody who watches knows how much I rate Elliot Anderson. I want to see more from him. The reason I want to see more from him is because I think he's got it. He's got that in his locker. Um, we well, haven't seen the creative side of Elliot Anderson apart from that little flick today. We're more seeing the grafter, the physical, the hard work. But I want to see some of the flair as well because we know he's got it in his locker. Uh, any more comments? John Mitchison, my two keepers again as a sub. Can you please ask Howard's question? It's a waste of space. Well, is it though? Honestly, I see so many people. Sorry, John, but I'm picking up on this. Uh, I, I, I see this a lot, really, from people moan about the two goalkeepers. I mean, is it really that big a deal? You have nine subs. Uh, Gillespie is here. He always travels with the team. So what's the harm in putting him on the bench? Is there any... I mean, you say a waste, you can only make five subs. Even if you, you make five, there's always going to be another four. And maybe these kids that people are calling to be on the bench aren't ready. Simple. They might not be ready. Why would you reward a kid uh, who you feel needs more or needs to give more or get better why would you reward them with the first team that's what it is it's a reward a place on the bench there isn't all there is sometimes method in the madness even though you might not see it don't make sure to sleep not his time out on the airport floor yeah and you'll find some uh you'll find some sketchy uh airbnb for as well i'm sure well we'll all be sharing a bed Enough said about that. Anyway, but yes, well, I'm not sure about sleeping on an Istanbul airport floor. Didn't out for my back, did it? Um, beat David Dom. I was a partner mine this week. <laughs> love that. Uh, and he replies with love a pint. Oh, Pete, you do, mate. You beat them all. Was a Magpie Ranger. I was in front of Isak's celebration for the first penalty against West Ham and Willock hurt his ankle in the celebration. He was in agony. Oh, interesting. Great three points in a difficult situation. Didn't know that, mate. Thanks for the info. Uh, Jeff Johnson, all things considered, I think team choice was about right today Eddie needed players on the bench that could have, have an impact and Anderson Barnes seemed to do that they did actually Graham Tyler Marseille away a better way it certainly is mate uh, Steve C Dan Byrne Dan Bird. <laughs> I think you mean Byrne and Cher striking up a decent partnership I thought Cher was a bit off at the day some of it um, however I thought Dan Byrne was good again today and it's really good to see the big man in his natural habitat Pete Dave again love it Dom yes we love you Dom we miss you and we can't wait for you to be back for the Tottenham videos right I'm going to call it because I've got lots to do shame because there's 106 on there do like it do share it and obviously subscribe to Jordy Journals if you like this kind of rubbish and you also like the proper analysis with the other two lads as well so do join uh, like comment share subscribe click the bell if you want these uh, bits and bobs when we'll put a short up but we'll do it live after a game because I tend to do these after every game and I also do them uh, yeah just after every game isn't it? yeah and we'll obviously do analysis videos um, from press conferences, the odd one during the week if there's a big total point, and also we do bits and bobs uh, after games, which you'll be able to catch as the next video of Joy Junior. So from Craven Cottage, this quirky old place, good evening, three more points, the fight goes on, and Europe's still alive. Like, comment, share, subscribe for all your Joy Junior's content.